In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly and Andrew Fiore. The time has come again to be on Welcome to your favorite podcast. It is Defend Your Movie. I am one of your hosts. It's Andrew, the Cool Breeze, Fiore, joined via phone, coming all the way from sunny FLA, is my pal and my co-host, Sean Dutch Donnelly, everybody. <laughs> yes, that's, it's me. It's Dutch. <laughs> I am here in Florida. I'm coming to you correspondent style. This is, I feel like we're on a news program and I'm calling from like a war zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, you well, know, like, we wanted to uh, get somebody, we wanted to get something on the books this week. Cause as we mentioned last week, yeah. we got a lot of changes coming on the podcast, all good things, but uh, you were away and I'm going to be away this weekend. So we wanted to just get a little new something out there just so we didn't disappoint anybody. Who ab- was, absolutely. Absolutely. That, um, uh, I, yeah, I'm down here in Key West. I've never been here before. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's uh, I didn't know this. There's there's chickens everywhere. Like everywhere you go, there's <laughs> chickens just walking around. Really? I had no idea. Yeah, there's chickens everywhere, and there's lizards everywhere. And apparently, the guy Tom Dustin, a super funny comic who I'm uh, working with this weekend, he, it's his room, and he told me the chickens. You can't murder the chickens. I'm like, well, I wasn't gonna. Mur- murder chickens <laughs> yeah. anyway but he was like he's like you can't even if you kill them by accident they're federally protected so you'll get in trouble but so if you kill if you kill the chickens you're screwed down here yeah, now bro and, let me uh, just cut you i know what you're thinking but you just can't kill the chickens all right don't even <laughs> well the weird thing is am i a monster because i got here saw a bunch of chickens and then went to the diner and had a chicken sandwich so like, <laughs> <laughs> if you're a monster like, then monster me up baby <laughs> But then on top of it, the other thing he told me that was pretty funny, walking into the place where I'm staying, it's like this guy's condo. It's actually really nice. But but there's a huge coconut tree right in the front lawn. And he was like, oh, also, watch out for falling coconuts. If you get hit one by one, you'll get murdered. So I'm like, what is going, why is it so perilous? In, in the world? It looks like this paradise of Key West. And I get down here, they're like, Hey, don't get don't get pissed on by an iguana. Don't murder the chicken, and don't get hit by coconuts. I'm like, I might as well go to Australia, where like that little jellyfish can just kill me in like three seconds. Yeah, yeah this just sounds like Florida. It's yeah, just yeah, the perfect totally description Florida. of Florida. Yeah, that's what it is. It's around the corner, there's just all sorts of danger. But uh, I am excited to talk to you, and I'm excited that we're actually putting something out this week. And uh, and hello to all the defenders. I think we have a good. A good theme because I'm down in Florida. We're going to talk beach movies. Uh, yes. and, did, and that's did, pretty exciting. Did you watch anything? I did. I watch anything this week? What yeah. did I watch? No, I, I uh, no, I didn't watch any movies this week. Did you watch any movies this week? No, I didn't watch anything this week. It just you know we both had a crazy busy week, and uh, the only thing I yeah. could I wanted to I put it in my notes that I wanted to talk to you was they announced uh, Paul Dano as the Riddler. Did you see that? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, I know you and, and I are both so, big fans of his, like just from There Will Be Blood. Oh, yeah. And I I'm, think that's such a what, great choice. Yeah, I think it's absolutely a great choice because I guess you're going to have him play that same type of guy. I guess that'll be what it is. Yeah. I'm wondering what I think this Batman's going to be. I think they're attempting a Nolan again, dude. I think that's what this is going to be. I think you're they're right. They're attempting Nolan type universe. Darker. He is the Penguin, but he's not the Penguin. Like he is the Penguin, but it's the guy. It's the it's the real guy who becomes the Penguin. That's right, you know right, right. Like, so it's one of those things where it's also like it's going to be a buttoned up version. It's not going to be Tim Burtonish. It's not going to definitely not going to be Joel Schumacherish. <laughs> that's just yeah. over the top. But I mean, like as far as it's like like if you, and also you have, also I think uh, Colin Farrell is playing what. Uh, somebody as well, right? Um, yeah, he's playing somebody as well. But the Paul Dano, I can imagine it'll be like this, like because you think about like the Penguin. 
I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. I, I'm really, really curious. Yeah, Colin Farrell's going to play Penguin. Oh, Colin Farrell's Penguin. I'm sorry. Yeah, and Paul Dano's the Riddler. Paul Dano is the Riddler. I'm yeah. sorry. All right. Yeah, and yeah, Robert yeah. Pattinson totally is uh, Batman. Robert Pattinson is Batman. So this is like, yeah, very white dude uh, Batman going on. Who apparently <laughs> is a very good actor. This guy, I don't really know much about Robert Pattinson other than he was in the uh, what do you call him, the Twilight movie. Twilight movie. And I was talking to List, Joe List, our buddy, and he was uh, telling me how he watched The Lighthouse, which is uh, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. It's like a two man movie, and he was like, "This kid blew my mind." So that gives me really hope. So I'm yeah. starting to get excited for this version. Yeah, I think I think they're like, oh, I think this is the thing. They can't afford to screw it up again. Like not to, not to be, not to be one of those people. But like, I didn't. I don't like the Ben Affleck. I, I didn't like Ben Affleck as Batman. I didn't think it was a good, a good. I don't think he was great at it. No, I, I, like I didn't. Affleck's I didn't Batman like movie. those Batman Superman movies. No, it was like this version where they were still going for like the, the superhero world. But after you have the Nolans, like if you're not gonna do, if you're not gonna do a Jokerish type thing. Like even the Joker, like like we love the Joker, and it's real world set, but it has that ridiculousness to it. He becomes the Joker at the end. If you continued the Joker for another hour and you had him playing the Joker in that world, it still has the tinge of the comic book movie in it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, even yeah, the way yeah, they yeah. Get the, even those even the production design, all that kind of stuff, it looks like a comic book. And this uh, one, I, no one, yeah, I'm excited sorry, for this ahead. one too. Sorry because. Uh, the cast from top to bottom, it's got that expanded kind of uh, more TV show feel where there's just there's just more villains in it. Where I guess that kind of yes. they did that in the '90s movies. But you have you know Robert Pattinson. You have you know Jeffrey Wright, the guy from Westworld. Yeah, he's Commissioner Gordon, and that's a really cool choice. If it's not yeah. going to be he's Gary awesome. Old, he'll uh, be a great Commissioner. Gordon. I agree. Uh, Zoe Kravitz is going to be Catwoman, which I think is a great choice too. Absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, I think it'll be like a. That's what the, I think. That's what they're gonna go for. They're going for like a younger type feel on the Batman. Like, and I think it'll be a qual. I think it'll be super quality. And I think uh, they. I think they made a lot of good casting choices. So it's like, how can unless the script is absolutely awful, which I don't think it is, because I think it's based off some really cool story out of the books. I think I forget what it is, which one it is. But somebody told me, like maybe Mike Lawrence or somebody knows which Batman story it's based off of. And it's, and I remember thinking like, Oh, that, that seems like a Nolan thing to me. That seems like a, a turn on the genre. It's not just him fighting a villain. It's like, you know, there's, there's, there's other things that play, you know? Right, right, right. So, so yeah, I'm excited to. to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause also I think, I think DC is starting to get it. You never know, man. Like when you have Marvel, these things don't last forever. Marvel, like they had the reins for the longest time. DC is starting to get it. Shazam is exactly. really good. Like, 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 they're starting to get, like, hey, well, even Shazam entered the comedy, and it, it was still, like, had a dramatic moment, but it was still, like, and it was like, kind of, like, thing that kids could watch, and I enjoyed it as a 41-year-old man-child. <laughs> 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 so I think they're starting to, like, bring people in. Who knows? Maybe they're bringing, bringing like, old Marvel staff in to really turn it in and, 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 and turn things into people. Like, I think they're realizing that the audience's palette is, is, is growing up. So... Uh, and, and those movies, if you're going to make a kids movie, like you make other stuff, like the Lego ones work for kids, or like the or like the how Into the Spider Verse works for kids. Right, right, right. People who grew up with Batman, they they like they like the idea of it being set in a real world. You know, maybe because everything's such a shit show now. You know, whatever it is. But yeah, we'll see how uh, Matt I Reeves does, man. I, I mean, he doesn't have you know. Yeah. I, I like those Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War of the Planet of the Apes movies. Good enough. Yeah, they're interesting and movies. He's Cloverfield guy. Cloverfield, Cloverfield, yeah, exactly. Yeah, which I really liked at yeah, the so time. He's good at making big, big budgeted movies. Yeah, he EP so, Ten Cloverfield Lane, which was a really cool movie. Really cool movie. That's, that's, that's I love that movie. Yeah, and that's even more. That's way more smaller scale than his other stuff. So uh, he can do both. Like the guy's quality. You know? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, we were trying right before we, we came on this show. We were trying to we we're trying to uh, brainstorm uh, beach movies because uh, <laughs> I'm in Florida. And one of the things I was I haven't thought of this movie until you brought this topic up was Summer School, which is from like oh, either yeah. 1990 or the or the late 80s. Mm. And if you haven't seen Summer School, it's awesome. Like it's a great 80s comedy movie that's like basically set on the beach and the and the yeah. beach town. Mark Harmon and this 
Mark Harmon, who like, yeah, was a movie star, I guess, for like a couple couple of years. 1987. Mark Harmon was like a big deal for like a, like, like for like 10 years, Mark Harmon was like a really big deal. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of things people don't realize about this movie too. It actually had, like, it was directed by Carl Reiner, um, like, oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, Danny Elfman did the music. You know, it was like I think I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, and um, then what's her name from Melrose Place is in it, or Kim, whatever her name is. And uh, Jeff Franklin, the guy who created Full House, is wrote the script. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually really, really funny. Yeah, I loved it. You know what it is? It was also it was used to be like an HBO stalwart. You would totally see, you would see it on HBO like every weekend. They play it a ton. It must have been cheap for them to play or something. <laughs> but I used to love it because they had, like, uh, the two. Remember the two? You know why I loved it also? Because I used to want to be a special effects person, and there's these two slacker dudes in it, like Chainsaw and something else. And they, <laughs> right, right. Their only thing is they want to gross everybody out with their special effects they make themselves. I remember that being thinking that was the coolest thing in the world when I was, like, eight years old. Oh, Kirstie <laughs> Alley's in it. it. Kirstie Alley's still... Kirstie Alley before Cheers. Yes, yeah, because she was like probably was that pre maybe that was right at Cheers when she was on. Well, Cheers? it was eighty seven, like so I don't think she was. Well, oh yeah, she maybe was on she Cheers. Was yet. On Cheers. I don't remember when she, the Diane crossed. On, the, Diane left at like uh, like Cheers started eighty three, I think eighty two. Yeah, so I, I so, Diane didn't yeah, have that. Definitely, out. Yeah, Diane had like a shorter run than you remember, if I remember yes. correctly. Yeah, but, it's uh, considered one of like the biggest career uh, blunders ever because like she that right, happened right. a lot. It was I th- the ones I think from, from back in the day, people who went from TV to movies was was uh, uh, what's her name Shelly Long, she- not Shelly Long, Shelly Duvall. No, not is. Shelly Duvall. Yeah, um, Shelly Long. That's Shelley her name. Long. Yeah, Duvall is the other one from The Shining. Right. Shelly Long leaving was a big deal because then she did like True Beverly Hills and like all these crappy movies, and then. Uh, and then David Caruso from NYPD Blue. Apparently, he was like a year on the show, and he was like, "Yes." Uh, he was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm so much better." <laughs> right, right, right. And then he left, and he did Jade with Chaz Palmer Terry, and that just like destroyed his career. <laughs> and he did uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, King of New York, not King of New York. What was that movie called where with with uh, Samuel Jackson in it and uh, Nicolas Cage? It was like a remake of like a fifth, like a 1960s or 50s movie. Oof, I don't uh, know if I even know. Called, where, where Nicolas Cage like, like got like Diesel for it, and he like works out. He bench presses the girl in it. Like this is one of the strippers from the strip club. He plays like the son of a mafia guy, and he's just like a meathead. And Caruso is like uh, a cop in it, and Samuel Jackson a cop in it. It's like God, what's it called? I can't kiss think. of death. Defenders, tell me what it is. Kiss of death. To the death, to the death. That's it. Oh my god, yeah, that's it. To the death. That's a remake, and that's a really bad, bad remake. And I think that Caruso thought he was going to be like this big, big like top action movie star, and it didn't happen. Yeah, buddy, it just it doesn't happen for gingers that way. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you got to know your role. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. yeah. Know your role, Caruso. <laughs> You're the partner, not the fucking... Yeah, exactly, the yeah, exactly. You're not a leading man, <laughs> bro. You, you, pale doesn't lead. <laughs> pale doesn't lead. Hey, I can attest to that. I don't lead shit. Yeah, I'm perfect. Same here. <laughs> but, uh, yes, but, uh, sta- Summer's uh, childhood class staple. Absolutely. And it's super funny. And I remember... I've, seen, I've probably seen it 50 times. When it was on, I used to watch it all the time. Yeah. So I was trying to think of other... Like, what other beach... If you think about it, there's not, that, not a ton of beach movies. Well, I mean, there is um, The Beach, which I was infatuated with when I was, like, a know-nothing sophomore in high school. I thought it was really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, it was the train spotting guys that made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then yeah, I was also yeah, thinking about, like, Florida movies, too. And <laughs> Cocoon popped in my head. <laughs> which... <laughs> I just remember the stand it was like that Don Amici won best actor that year and it was like what? He won it for Cocoon? Yeah. I, I unless oh, yeah, I'm deadly right. wrong. Yeah, he Yeah, you're right. That yeah, it was it was a big deal when it came out. You know what that was the see I'm talking remember we, we we talked about this on the Oscar episodes. When like this like the, the seventies was the last time for this not not the last time, but it was like the eighties did you really didn't have like you had auteur type stuff. But sometimes through the cracks, like 
these movies like Cocoon would become like critically hailed, but they weren't. They were just like critical. They were critically acclaimed for like the eighty. That's what it was. Right, <laughs> right, it was. right, right. Like, it was like there's a lot of feel good stuff that had a lot of old timey good actors in it that they decided to be like, hey, this is like a good, actually a good movie when it was just like an okay movie. Like Cocoon's like that. And if you remember, the, there's a movie called Batteries Not Included. Remember oh, that movie? Of course, I loved it. <laughs> Yeah, that that kind of had the vibe. Like I could have won some awards back in the day. I remember it being like, it was like Elizabeth Pena, and I think Don Ami- was Don Amici in that. I or think Don Amici was in that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's about these these things that come. To, it was like alien visitors that come to Earth that like you know, and they, and they like they change the lives of the people they can come in contact. Yeah, through like with. the little uh, like remote controls and electronics and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking like that. That I remember thinking back in the day like. Oh yeah, this is a really big deal. This movie, like it was like, but now you don't even hear. No, you don't hear about it at all. Like nobody talks about batteries. Not wow, I haven't heard batteries not included in forever. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think that's what happened. So Cocoon, you know, you had Steve Gutenberg, and so back oh, yeah. he still like had some street cred, I guess. Like I guess he did. He, he definitely did. Yeah, he, well, I mean that was eighty five, so he was coming hot off Police Academy. Hot off Police Academy, yeah. And, the Gutenberg and then, star was just, never higher. Gutenberg, great actor, great actor. Diner, come on, man! Like you yeah. can't like the guy. If, if his life could have gone way different, you know what I'm saying? Like that's why it proves like Hollywood is fucking unforgiving, man. Like it's kind of crazy because the guy is talented, and he made Cocoon. He was good in that. He's he's funny <laughs> in Police Academy. It was the but Stone Cutters. Whatever you're doing. What'd you say? It was the stone cutters. <laughs> Do you remember that Simpsons episode? They go, who made Steve Gutenberg a star? <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, the stone cutters episode is great. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I think that when it comes to Cocoon, like, I think it's like this thing where you're watching it. You know what it is? When I, I saw it oh, so young. I haven't young, seen it in forever. Yeah, I, I think I, 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 I only. I so young. I don't think, like, now I'd be like, I'm getting, I'm getting older. So I'm like, that'd be nice. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> That seems so nice if that happened. Like, I just become young again when I'm old. Did you ever watch the San Junipero one? episode of Black Mirror? I feel like that had a the very cocoon thing. San Junipero of Black Mirror. It was oh, in, that? like, two seasons ago. It was essentially... Uh, I'm going to give it a really bad description. But it had very cocoony vibes where it was just basically like, oh, yeah, old people can go to a certain place and live out their youth through, you know, basically... I like this Oculus Rift kind of thing, you know? Oh, God, yeah. But, and it was um, a cool episode? Yeah, very cool. Probably the best one of that Black Mirror batch. Black Mirror, I've only seen a few apps because it freaks me out too much. They're pretty great, get, like, but they've been getting less and really... less. I don't know. I didn't love the last three. They put out like, they started at like five at a time or six at a time. Now they're just down like three at a time. It's like, geez, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, they lose the quality. Well, it happens to shows all the time where it's like, hey, what else can we come out? We're trying to top ourselves, but then we kind of get yeah. behind by trying to top ourselves. Yeah, when it, well, when it comes to, uh, yeah, that that would be, that's I got to check that one out. I'll, I'll watch that on Netflix. Um, but even speaking of TV, we said, we might as well just talk about it. Like, I'm down here in Key West. All I can think about, I think this is one of the reasons I took the gig, <laughs> because I watched Bloodline. Bloodline. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, dude. And it's not a movie, obviously, but you know what? It's one of those. We can make the exception because it's one of those things that's like it's like a giant movie. It's it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's movie quality production. It's movie quality acting. It's movie quality uh, writing. It, it, it is an unbelievable show. And I was telling and, you this yesterday. Uh, it has one of the best first seasons in in television history. Yes. yes. It's yeah. So yeah. suspenseful. It's so well acted. It's so well written, and it's got twists and turns. And you go, ah, oh, this is fantastic. I I don't know how far in you are. I finished the whole series. By the end of it, I was. I, so I got right to the end. Out. I just didn't finish the last like five apps, but I, I, I uh, yeah, maybe like unsettled. It. it made me feel very off. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like yeah, what? that's one. That's you know what that is. That's all. That's that's the acting and that's the writing. Because yeah, I, yeah. The guy who plays the black. There's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm not giving anything away. The black sheep of the family. You find that out the first episode is Ben Mendelsohn. It was so good. A bunch of stuff. He's so good. He's in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's been in. Uh, he's been a bad guy in Rogue One. He was a bad guy in. He's. Uh, I think he's from Australia, right? Or is he in New Zealand? Um, I forget what he is. Yeah, he's foreign. I don't know where. But he is. He like great actor. Everybody in this show is good, but he is the 
absolute standout of the of the show. Like, and also, what's her name from Freaks and Geeks? Isn't it uh, uh, Laura something or whatever her name is? Um, she's amazing. The one who plays. Uh, yeah, I know exactly. The, uh, Man, yeah, yeah, just, she's awesome. She plays shot. the sister. And, what's that? My memory is just shot. Yeah, I forget her name. Uh, Lauren. We're all, we also we're, this is such a fly by the seat of our pants episode. We, we haven't really, we didn't really think it out, but as, you want to talk about as quality these things others. to watch. Watch Bloodline. Linda Cardellini. Linda Cardellini. Linda Cardellini. That's it. Did you look it up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Linda yeah, Cardellini. it's definitely Laura something. Uh. <laughs> uh, and then what's her name? Sissy Spacek is in it. She's awesome. Uh-huh. And uh, and also what uh, the the author. Um, uh, 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 he died like right after, right, right before, right after like Bloodline came out. Like in the middle of the run, he died. I think they had him die. Um, oh, who the father? Sam Shepard. Sam Shepard. Oh, right, right, right. Sam, Sh- oh, the playwright. I shouldn't say. Yeah, the play. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chloe Sevigny's in it. Chloe, Sev- yes, she's awesome in it. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. Like if you if you're a defender and you haven't seen Bloodline, watch Bloodline. We, I always talk movies on this podcast, but. Watch Bloodline. Yeah. Uh, it, it is it is unsettling to say the least. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to think like it, it really is true though. You don't like I think maybe you can't set much, many movies on the beach because like there's not too much conflict on the beach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like usually it's like fun in the sun. That's why when we were looking stuff up, you were like, hey, there's a beach blanket bingo. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many of those sixty never, surf it, movies. Where it's, it's just Frankie like Valley and let's, yeah, yeah, let's go to the beach and then break into a song. But I mean, yeah, it's like <laughs> back to the beach, bikini beach, muscle beach party, yeah. teen beach movie. Well, yeah. well, the cool thing about the cool thing about back to the beach, and if you haven't seen that, it's like it's basically Frankie Valley Valley and Annette Funicello like going back to the beach, like it's going back to those types of movies. Yeah, I used to but love when I was a kid. Cheek. Like doesn't it, it kind of like has a self awareness, like it has a sense of humor about how corny it is. Like, yeah, it does. Not, it does. It absolutely does. I think is it Pee Wee Herman in it? Pee Wee's in it, right? Pee Wee Herman is it uh, is in it, and if we could also come back to uh, Full House, uh, Aunt Becky's in it. She oh, plays yeah. the daughter, oh, Lori Loughlin. Yeah, yeah Lori Loughlin had like a great. Lori Loughlin was in like Rad, which is this BMX movie that our friend Mike Cannon loves. Like Mike Cannon loves Rad, the movie so much. <laughs> right. Uh, he named his kid after one of the characters in Rad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Lori Loughlin was like the love interest. I, you know, I remember having a crush on her back then. Even when she was Aunt Becky, I probably had a crush on her. Oh, she was great. And then she became the criminal that we know her as today. No, nah, I don't care. She became hardened. And she... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had a lot of great point. music in it. It had like uh, Fishbone was in it. Ska, Ska, Ska. Jamaica, yeah. Ska. Um, <laughs> I think OJ might even be in it, to be honest, if I remember correctly. No, OJ's in Naked Gun. Is he in that too? He might have been. I haven't seen it since I was a kid, but I, I used to watch that movie endlessly. Imagine if like OJ was like, he's not really, like he was in it, but by accident, like we just at the beach looking for blondes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Big Kahuna. Like there's a party scene. He's like one of the extras. Like, how you doing? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, dude, I I don't even know if we can do a defend because you know it's it's you're not going to defend back to the beach. Uh, the, the I would say the 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 biggest movie to come out of the beach is probably the beach. Like I I think maybe that's why they stopped making. Oh, also, you have Castaway. We didn't even think of Castaway. Oh yeah, Castaway. That's a I beach guess that's movie. A, that's a beach movie. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's totally a beach movie. He's stranded on a beach. I didn't see Cast Away until I was like maybe like five years ago. I, it just like got by me for some reason. You know what I mean? You know, I, I was just movies I, like that sometimes. Yeah, I appreciate it more and more when I see it. Every time I see it, I've seen it a few times at this point. Yeah, uh, it's I think fun. It's definitely a quality movie. You know what happens, man? And I, I might have said this before, so I apologize to the defenders that I have. Uh, you know what happens a lot of the time is that when you have Spielberg and you have Hanks involved in something. The expectations are so high that even if it's really good, people aren't aren't as you know they're not going to talk about it as much. It's almost an, like accepted. It's almost like if you're a straight A student and you come home with more A's, and your parents are like, "Yeah, that's what you do." You're a <laughs> right? Student. Yeah, you know just what I like, mean? Yeah. Like Hanks, we know. Yeah, par for the course. Like this is what they're supposed to do. Like even the post. <laughs> like, the post is a really good movie. The, the Castaway is a really good movie. Like if if Charlie if Wilson's Hanks War wasn't. Charlie Wilson's War is great. If Hanks wasn't as well known as he is, 
I think that he would be heralded, it, which I think he was at the time a little bit, but it was almost like he's such a good actor that it, it's like, you know how hard it is to act by yourself? Like, I, I, like think about that. Like, think about, yeah, well, he was coming off Forrest Gump and then Philadelphia. Yeah. And then we're like, all right, we just got to give it some. We can't, we can't dominate well, every year. I don't think, you know, Castaway was way after, wasn't it way after, what, time, what year was it? 2000, did you look it up? Yeah. It was, I think it was, Forrest Gump was 95. Philadelphia was probably the, the year after or, or whatever, or not the year before. Or whatever. Yeah, so I guess it was only five years later, but yeah, you're right. It's, uh, but what you call it, but it seems, it seems way later to me, Castaway. Castaway seems like it was made in like right, right. 2006 or something to me. I don't know why. Let's, but, just uh, my own. Let's just see who won. Ahead of him for that, um, unless he did actually win, he might have. I don't think he did. But but you know what I mean? Like the, the the quality the quality of his acting. It's like, hey, if he was an up and comer, he probably win. He would definitely win an Oscar for it. So like one of those kind of things where you're like, oh yeah, that's so hard to do, and you do such a good job. Oh, you know, and I know it's like, that's who won. Who was it? I'll give you the other nominees first. Uh, Jeffrey Rush for Quills, which I'm not, I don't even remember. I guess he, oh, uh, Quills. Wow. Yeah. I remember Quills, but I didn't see it. Um, Ed Harris for Pollock. He played Jackson Pollock. Yeah. Tom Hanks, uh, in Castaway, uh, Javier Bardem for Before Night Falls and Russell Crowe, Maximus. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. 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 Took him home for Gladiator. Won. He would have won. I, I think he would have won then, definitely. Yeah. I think Gladiator two thousand, that's right. Like Gladiator is great, but it's 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 so much fun to watch. But the uh but yeah, you want to talk about beach movies, Castaway, does it beat the beach? Uh yeah, yeah I'd say so. <laughs> that's my, just say, Hey, I got another beach movie. All right, green light. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh <laughs> I'm at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me at the beach. Yeah. I'm a FedEx employee. Like it's, it's, they're like, hey, I got this product placement movie for FedEx, but I don't, I don't, does product placement <laughs> count if the plane crashes? Like, <laughs> it's, it's a FedEx it. plane that crashes in that movie. It really was a free commercial so, for FedEx. It totally was, but was it though? Because they're just showing like, I guess because by the end of the movie, he gets the package to the lady. So they're like, hey, FedEx, we can even crash our plane on deserted island and we'll <laughs> still get you our package. I wonder if that was part of the thing, like the, the big muckety mucks from FedEx came down the set. They're like, what do you, you mean? You know they had to have. They're like, he's got to get the package to the lady, at least one of these people. He's got to do it. It's, right, right. It's part of the FedEx credo, you know. <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. And that's a beach. It's a lot of beach. That's the most beachiest beach there is. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to go to the beach, buddy? If you can get by the chickens and the lizards uh, yeah, and the coconuts? Yeah. yeah I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to escape to the beach. Yeah. I uh, Escape to the yeah, beach? Perfect. I'm definitely going to go to. Uh, I'm definitely going to go hang out and uh, I'll go on a boat. I think, and maybe the Ooh, beach. Nice. Yeah, I should go to the beach. You know what it is? I do. I burn very easily, Andy. As I'm you know, of, I'm, yes. I'm of Irish. I'm of Irish descent, <laughs> and uh, this is how we do it. We we go and then we like we go and we burn. Like I have my hat on inside. That's how much yeah, I burn. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm wearing it right now as I'm talking to you. <laughs> So I have to be very like leery of like what I do, but I do want to get like I can get some kind of color. Basically, what happens is I can like I burn to like a darker burn, which looks kind of like a tan, right? And then uh, then it goes away and goes back to white. Like there's no like yeah. me being being like no brownish. brownish. I'm not browning. Same at all. here. No, no brownish. No. I was very yeah. proud of uh, how well we we maintained our uh, uh, non burning in Vegas when we were there in the dead of August. <laughs> Yes, we did, and we, I think we used a lot of sunscreen. And, uh, <laughs> it went through four cans, and then we and those hazmat suits—they helped as well. We wore these. <laughs> we walked around in giant tents. Um, you had a pledge. I bought two bottles last week. Well, it goes fast. <laughs> oh, by the way, we didn't do a Seinfeld reference. That was it, right there. Up. Oh, what was that? That's the oh, butler. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's right. I didn't even realize that you, that's what you were doing. <laughs> you snuck it in. I snuck it in. Uh, but no, uh, the Bubble Boy episode was on the other night. And oh, John oh, Heyman. I love him so much. And he goes, oh, you who? I love you who? And he goes, he has the fine product. Brian Doyle Murray. Brian Doyle Murray. Yeah, it's a fine product. 
<laughs> yes, the fine product. He's home with his mother all day. I'm out there five days a week slinging you hoo. Slinging you hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Then, the other gray uh, line when him and Susan are in there, and he says, "What's your story?" She goes, "I have no story. Why don't you take your top off?" <laughs> Harold, <It's so> funny. <laughs> you take your top off. Why don't you take your top off? <laughs> oh no, it's Moops. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's Moops. It's not Moops. It's oh Moors, you idiot. There's no, there's a beach episode of uh, a Seinfeld, the, the, the lobster episode when they go to. Oh the sure, Hamptons. they go to the Hamptons. Um, that's one with shrinkage. That's a great one. That's shrinkage. That's the, the breathtaking. The baby's breathtaking. <laughs> yeah, the baby's that's some snuggly one. baby. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. my friend. I'm going to go enjoy the sun. Enjoy it. Have a great weekend, and uh, I will talk to you next week. We'll have a new episode out, and thank you, defenders. Thank you so As much, always. defenders, for listening. Sorry, you like kind of a mini episode this week, but but we ha- like we said, we have big things coming for the show. And we're really excited about it, and you will get content up the wazoo starting very soon. So yes. uh, definitely keep listening. Tell your friends about the show. Rate, rate, and review. Uh, we have an Instagram now. Uh, I should yeah. tell you. There's not much on it right now, but uh, give us a follow, a preemptive follow, at Defend Your Movie on Instagram. Check it out. You can get to it through my, my bio or my, you know, I'm following it as well. So uh, follow me and Andy also on Instagram and Twitter. Yes, please do. And uh, rate and subscribe and just tell a friend so we can grow this bad boy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take it to take it to the top. We're gonna take it to uh, <laughs> it's uh, the place to be. That's what it's gonna be. This, this podcast is gonna be the place to be. Can you um, uh, and, uh, 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 in, what do you call it? Um, introduce yourself as Dutch all weekend because Dutch really seems like a Florida name. Go, hey, Dutch Donald. Yeah, here. if I roll up, I'm like, hi, I'm Sean Dutch Donald. <laughs> I know you, you may know me from the Defender Movie Podcast. So I'm like, Wait, what? What are you talking? We don't listen to podcasts. We're out in the sun all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't do anything. All right, Touchy. Uh, but thank you, buddy. Thank you for doing this. And uh, we will see you guys next week. We'll see, you then. see you then. Bye bye.